Okay, the question asks, what force does a trampoline, okay, so there's a trampoline, have to apply to Jennifer, a 44 kilogram gymnast? I have no sense of feeling for kilograms, even if that's large or small. If I would assume gymnasts are light, <laughs> but I have no number sense for kilograms <laughs> in terms of human weight. Uh, I don't think I even know what my own mass is in kilograms. Uh, anyways, but well, we are given the mass of the person. That's what's important to hear. Uh, to accelerate her straight up. Oh, so uh, it's a bit unusual. The question is giving us the acceleration. All right. Um, and okay, so I think I have enough. Let me draw free body diagram to make sure that I fully understood the situation. So as I draw the free body diagram of Jennifer, uh, I'm going to start out with a uh, gravity because there's always gravity. Uh, <laughs> to a starting place, I, it's good to never forget that there's gravity, probably always. Um, so what I have to remember is that they gave us acceleration, in fact, an upward acceleration. So we must have an upward force. I'm just going to label this as a force of the trampoline, uh, not to be confused with the tension, although it does kind of come from tension <laughs> in a roundabout way. And um, I, I think for this question, what I'll have to do is write down a, a Newton's second law equation, which is to say the net force, which is going to be, I'm going to define my upward direction as positive. And again, uh, this week you will have more proper introduction to the standard strategy steps, which involves includes all this. So upward direction is positive. So trampoline force minus the force of gravity. The way I like to write these equations is I like to write it in a way that all these variables will be positive. Um, that's my preference, and I highly recommend that you try that as well. Um, and that's going to be equal to mass times acceleration. And I'm kind of eyeing this positive direction, direction of acceleration that my acceleration here is expected to be positive. Just double checking. So, so okay, I have this equation and I think I have only one unknown, uh, right? I don't know the force of the trampoline. That's what's being asked for. I can just solve for it. Let's go ahead and then solve for it. Add both sides by mg. The force of the trampoline is ma plus mg. And if you want, you can even simplify this a little bit. Mass times acceleration plus g. Now, I can imagine that there are some people in this class who might have been able to skip right to this final expression, um, which means you know you have good intuition. Um, what I would ask you to consider as you go through the material uh, this week is to try learning the systematic problem solving method that we are teaching to you as a standard strategy. Do give an attempt at learning that method. Uh, it can be kind of a longer set of steps, especially for simple questions like this. But the advantage that systematic approach has is that Imagine a more difficult question where you don't really have a sense of intuition for. Uh, if all you have to rely on is your intuition and ability to skip to the answer, then you're kind of stuck. There's nothing more you can do. The, the, the advantage and the benefit of the systematic approach is that the system gives you something to do, even when you don't have an intuition. So, um, so anyways, in any case, I got an answer here. Let me just plug in the numbers. Uh, mass, 44 kilogram times, let me do parenthesis. My calculator does that. 7.4 meter per second squared plus 9.8 meter per second squared. And I need to say equal. Okay, that's the answer. And uh, I just want you to note that I, so let me just write it down. 756.8 or 757. I can round it. Uh, 757 newtons. Notice how I didn't even read the remainder of the question. It's because it's just a reminder to you that force is directly related to acceleration. I mean, the, the, the explanatory sentence is simply explaining 
again, <laughs> something that you should know. <laughs> Sometimes questions will do that. Sometimes they will also give you extra news information to confuse you. You gotta kind of read it through it and learn which is which. But um, at this point, I think that reminder is useful because people have this intuitive sense connecting velocity with emotion. And um, when we talk about, or force with emotion, and when we talk about motion, we do really need to separate out uh, velocity and acceleration. One uh, relates to force, the other does not. Um, so, so that should be there, so 757. Let me just put it in and make sure that's the right answer. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And you can actually think of all these scenarios. Um, so as the gymnast is jumping on the trampoline, so after she makes contact, but still moving downward, uh, if trampoline didn't behave like a spring, then there could be that upward force uh, associated with upward acceleration. At some point, she'll slow down and come to a brief stop. As long as her acceleration upward is still 7.4 meter per second squared, that answer is still right. As the trampoline is pushing her up and she's uh, moving upward, as long as the upward acceleration is dead, the answer still remains the same. Like the velocity doesn't matter. Um, 